Hi, everybody. Welcome to I Think I'll Make It Everything is Broken Edition. My lathe is broken, my drill press is broken, and so while I wait for replacement slash parts, we're going to make something that doesn't require uh, power tools, per se. So these are the brass, uh, I'm not going to say inserts, but I guess sheathings I use to decorate the uh, the shaft of these sort of these warhammers and and fantasy maces that I make. So here we're cutting a, a specific length, 3.14159 inches. It's a one inch diameter shaft uh, that is steel because we don't make it weak. And so we have to measure it out because these are gonna wrap around. Uh, we make it a little longer, but 84 millimeters is what it comes down to in metric speak. Um, to be able to emboss them though, what we need to do is right here is anneal the copper so that it's it's soft and malleable otherwise it's a bit hard on the machines uh which are hand crank machines you'll see in a moment so we're just gonna you know get it to just before cherry hot and uh, i love the color play that happens with uh, with heating these up and they'll get to a sort of a nice dark brown and uh, just prior to the flame turning green as it hits it and yeah you see there you go immediate dark brown it's lovely as I'm recording this, I do realize I called them brass. They're copper. They're 20 gauge copper. I just get hypnotized by brass. Out of the pantheon of metals, I particularly love brass. So, you know, my eye always wanders. So, you know, past selves watching this, I think I'll put a little note in. Um, it is 20 gauge copper. And yeah, I'm not too worried about um, corrosion on these particular ones because these are actually not for the example that you're getting shown. This is for a new project that is going to be patinaed. It's actually going to, we're going to accelerate the patina to make them a lovely blue green, but we won't see that here. That's for, that's for the main video. So we just quench them after we're done that. What a great sound. And then we start moving over to the uh, the embossing machine. This is the pattern that I'm going to use for the other project. The example, again, that you see is going to have a different pattern because I like to make these confusing. The gist of it is, though, we adjust this, uh, this roller so that it presses and embosses the pattern on the harder steel section onto the copper. You can see that the copper bends up. There's a fair bit of pressure, and it comes out lovely. It's like a little wallpaper. I think this one is a, a koi fish kind of neat little pattern. So next we have our shaft and uh, it's just me brute strength bending it. Now you'll notice it's darker because we've annealed it again uh, because it would be, you know, I mean, I'm strong, but I'm not that strong. So our goal, if we've done it right, is to get this seam as close together as possible for the silver solder. Uh, it doesn't fill gaps, and so uh, we just need to hammer it down. And just, we're using a nylon hammer. So, uh, if it was a metal hammer, it would stretch it, but the nylon doesn't. However, we did end up using a metal hammer just to get it just that last little bit. And you'll notice to keep springing out, what I would do and what's not shown is I would take it off of the shaft, and then I would just slightly overbend it with my hands. And uh, we'll see in a moment that it comes up to a pretty good, pretty good uh, tolerance. Cause that's already way too wide. Like, So here we go. You can still see a little bit through it. I'm not too happy with it. And in fact, this one I will end up redoing um, just because you'll see once we solder it right at the end there, there's a, there's a bit of a gap. So here's what we've done. We've set up our soldering station. We are going to preheat the metal so that when we spray our flux on, it does that cool foam thing. Here we go, you see it sort of turns white uh, and we get the entire piece nice and warm. Those little uh, squares with the arms are called hummingbirds, which is particularly cool. And we've just got some, you know, some uh, insulative stuff on our, our Lazy Susan of Doom here. So I'm spraying inside where we're gonna place the solder along the seam. They're gonna be uh, flattened out uh, medium silver solder and we're gonna just try and slightly angle them diagonally across the seam in a little sort of mountain pattern uh, so that they, they fill in nicely. And they're just, uh, you know, we put them through the roller just to flatten them out to a flat. They, they come in a wire and they are very finicky. 
as you can see here. Once we place them uh, adequately, we're just going to start heating up the entire body again. There's my big old mitt. You can t <laughs> it's tough with large hands, let me tell you. So, as we can see, we're just going to overall heat everything, and then we're going to start focusing on the bottom, and then the interior. Never tr well, trying not to put a direct flame in this early stage on the silver solder, because it just, it just will not melt. We need an overall... Uh, heating so the lazy susan is great for that as are the hummingbirds because they keep it in place and we just spin it and spin it and torch it and torch it you'll notice shortly and immediately as i started speaking the flame coming off the copper is green super cool it gets a really neat sort of luster it looks a little wet and that's when it's just before cherry red and uh, and annealing, as far as I understand it. So this is all, I'm more of a lathe guy, you know, I'm more of a machining, laser cutting, bending guy. This stuff is uh, is generally new to me. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm being taught by my mom, who is great. She's a, a great jeweler. And we're also, she's got all the tools, so we're using her workshop. So thanks, mom. <laughs> The family that makes together, right? So, super cool green flame. And, yeah, I think we got it. No, we didn't. <laughs> so you can see, you can see the solder starting to, to turn into like a little mercury, but... I thought we had it, but no, we needed more heat. And so I am now focusing, and you can start to see the copper glow. I don't want to overheat it. I don't want it to get too large. Uh, it's not like it's going to shrink, but it will expand. And if it's too loose, it's just not good on the shaft of the, uh, of the fantasy weapon. <laughs> so here we go. Okay, we're getting closer. And when it does happen, and I take away the flame, you're going to see the solder, which looks like a, just a line right now. It's just going to flash and just be like... Whoosh. And there we go. Boom. You saw it grow out. Boop. And there we go. Look at that. Super neat grayish coloring to the copper. That will come off. We can polish it. We can do all sorts of things. You'll see in the example that, uh, that I show at the end of this, which isn't this piece. Again, I'm redoing this one. It isn't even this pattern. It's not even for this particular project. But it shows a good example of what is good. Here you can see we're like, okay, so we've got some gaps on the outside. Not very good. So we're going to take the torch and we're just going to give it a couple of flash. Uh, there you go. Boop, 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 boop. Love that color change. To see if maybe we can draw some of the solder out. It sort of works. Here is an example of what we're looking for. And it's a little sloppy even. But it's a particularly good example of an even, solid bead. You can see on the inside how it spreads out. Uh, to prevent that on the outside, we actually use a graphite pencil. And it sort of keeps it contained. So here you can see that the emboss pattern is a much stronger emboss pattern that I ended up using a, uh, a mother's hand polish on. So that's kind of cool. Uh, again, in my other videos, I show you how. So here's a finished example of the embossed shaft covers with, uh, with the brass uh, rings in between. This one's funny. This is a, I'll do a different video on it. This is the bone hammer. And this was my first attempt at making, you know, a fantasy weapon. I'd never bothered with any of it. Super fun. Um, and I'm, I'm quite, I love it. I love <laughs> just sitting around holding the bone hammer. <laughs> and folks, that brings us to the end of this like weird little tutorial. Um, and it's about that time I, uh, I ask you to subscribe and maybe like the video, throw a like my way. And if you'd like to see more of this stuff, I am happy to do it. Next video is likely going to be the uh, the assembly of the Lightning Elvish Mace, which was inspired by my trip recently down to Nogales. Thanks, have a great night.